for all. Amen. Okay, we came out of closed session at 7.15 with nothing to report. Uh, may I make a comment to that? Um, no, because okay, well, I'm going yeah. over the agenda right now. Yeah. Well, I, it's a, it, but, but I'm, I'm really talking about the the closed session. I came out of closed I, session with I, nothing. I understand report. that, but if you're never reporting anything out of closed session, you're doing it wrong, and it is a it's a red flag. Okay, you need to uh, categorize these things a little bit better, and you'll see. An example uh, with the supervisor's reports. Mm. You, you guys, I mean, almost never report anything, and that's wrong. It's a public meeting. I guess we skipped No, it was a closed happen. session. It's not a public. It wasn't open to I, the public. I'm, I'm, you know, Bill, okay. trust yeah. me, this is the way it's done at the county level, and it's done throughout the state of California. Okay, I'll have to look into that. Um, any changes to the agenda? Nothing. Okay. Just calendar. Uh, Grab your minutes. And Bill Tay. I do have a question by the way. Go for it. Um, mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious what the conference was, um, the uh, recreation department conference. We went to the uh, Park and Rec Conference up in Sacramento. It's an annual conference. We used to go every year, every other year. We've been for like four years. Um, so me, Robin, and Luke, and Carolyn went up there. It's um, kind of like the number one conference for Park and Rec staff. So get new ideas, get it up to date on laws. So it's like a two-day conference. Did you, did you find it helpful? Yeah, I mean, it's not something you want to go to every you know, year. It doesn't change that much. Um, but every three or four years, yeah, definitely got some good information, networking, built some relationships with other staff around here. Mm -hmm. And then this, the second question is the um, janitorial supplies, $1,300, are we that filthy? Yes. Holy <laughs> <laughs> um, Sometimes they go, I mean. Is that because of camp? Yeah, we're con I mean, we're constantly like, you know, keeping up to the janitorial, but then Every once in a while, also, they kind of we go and get stuff that we haven't gotten for a while. You get like your kind of weekly, monthly things, but a couple times a year, we also kind of load up on the stuff we're going to need. It also covers the firehouse, too, and all that extra stuff as well. It's not just super dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like the extra strong bleach that you buy. Once well, yeah, extra cleaning stuff. Yeah. Thank you. That's all. Anybody else? I do look. Um, yeah, I wanted to find out, I, I see in the bills paid, the sole ed solar holdings for February, March, and April costs, and then I see an April cost for PG and E, and I'm wondering, um, are we saving any money in solar? Yes, we are. Uh, First off, I'm not sure which PG&E one you're looking at because we have there's three different PG&E bills: one strictly for street lights, one strictly for gas, and then oh, it's 1038. 1038. Yes. Now, of that number there, that's for about 10 different meters. The solar only touches two of those 10 meters. Okay. Uh, and I'm definitely looking at it and breaking them down. However, when the PG&E switched over from uh, it's still going to be probably another month or two before i can really make bonafide comparisons because i don't have the direct numbers from pg e because when they switch over like one month i had a negative 100 dollars bill for another one of these meters that then kind of got caught up the next month so it takes them a few months when they go from standard to what's known as net energy metering to then really kind of be true so that way i know what i have going on <coughs> But I'm certainly looking at it both in a year and over year cost as well as a usage. Okay. And do we know that um, February, March, and April for solar solar holdings, are those reasonable costs? Or, I mean, have you 
looked into it to make sure that those are reasonable? How do those get built? They're based strictly off the power generated, just that's the, the agreement within the power purchase agreement. So it's how much power that generates. What I can tell you is, like for a pool, our PG&E bill one month was about $19, as opposed to $2,200 the prior year. Okay, thank you. You got it. So, uh, I have a question on that. Uh, it's, yeah. um, uh, regarding the solar, um, what rate are we getting it at? Is It's a variable rate, right? No. Uh, no? no? Solar? No. It's a well, PG&E is a variable PG &E rate. PG&E is a variable rate. Off-peak is 19 cents an hour. Part-peak is 26 cents an hour. And peak is 55 cents an hour. Mm -hmm. And and solar is? 19 cents an hour. How much? 19 cents an hour. 19 cents an hour. Okay. Uh, that's because you're on the highest uh, tariff for PG&E, correct? Uh, no, actually we're on the most advantageous tariff for PG&E with use of uh, solar. No, don't, don't, don't twist words. You're, you're I'm not twisting words. Okay, if, if you had no solar and you, you had a rate, it would be a lot less than what we're paying now to PG&E. Uh, I don't know. I would you not don't recommend, know? I would not recommend the rate that we are on if we didn't have solar. Because it's too much. Because it's not the most advantageous. But I don't know what the exact other rate Eric, I'm really being put. very direct. With I, I'm all expecting all direct all my response. I, there is a better rate for PG&E. That what I just is said. a statement. Yeah. Okay. And we could get it, but we're not getting it now because we're doing solar, and you feel that that is <clears throat> most advantageous to the district. That's fine. What are we done? Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. May I make the motion to approve the consent calendar? You may. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstained since I wasn't at that meeting. Okay. okay, public comment. Open for items not on the agenda. I do. Okay. Um, first, this is just kind of a personal thing. If any of you guys ever drive in the next two months on Pinewood, you know, it's parallel to Whitewood. If you drive on Pinewood, in the 300 and the 400 block of Pinewood, there are two baby deer. Last year she had two babies, the year before she had one baby. They're, they're living in one of my neighbor's homes, behind the home, the mom and two babies. So just as a cautionary um, notification, just watch out for the babies. Jimmy's house. And then I do have the um, another thing about the project to replace the maintenance shed. It seems like it continues to grow in more tasks and more costs. Um, it's been going on for a year and a half, and it seemed like a year and a half ago it started out pretty simple with a garage for the vehicles, a maintenance building to do the maintenance work, and then the fenced area where all the, oh, I should say all, where a lot of their uh, storage cabinets are and tools and equipment like rakes and I don't know what else, bags of stuff. And it just seems like um, the costs keep going up and up and up. And I'm just, I just want to say that I think it's starting to get a little out of control. And what I was wondering is if there's any way that somebody can make sure that the costs stay down because we've got a lot of measure eight items that need to be taken care of. And I think if we go from you know, $30,000, which was, we were thinking a year and a half ago, to $100,000, we've got a lot of money in between there to cover other uh, measure eight costs. So I would just like to say you guys to keep that in mind. Thank you. Stephen. So um, it's kind of a broad comment. Uh, later, we're going to be talking about some of these issues. Um, the uh, we're going to be talking about memorial events, but I didn't really want to talk about that. What I want to talk about is the uh, future of this district. There seems to be a lot of confusion 
about the financial uh, capacity for this district to meet its obligations. I know that I believe all of you are pretty uh, confident that we can meet, meet them, but as I look at the pension obligations and some of the larger capital expenses, I don't see how we're going to achieve that. We've got 1,700 homes here, we've got 1,700 tax paying entities to contribute money. Um, and, and if you add CSD 13, I guess that's another 500 or so. But, um, but for example, um, this one retiree that we'll be talking about uh, was retired for 31 years on a pension. And uh, I, uh, I, I don't know her, and I, but I assume that she, all the great things that we uh, have been said about her are true. And, um, I just want to point out that, like most pensioners on government uh, payroll, they end up getting paid uh, much more than what they ever earned during their lifetime of their <coughs> service to the community. In this case, I don't know exactly what the total take was. Um, that's a bad way to put it. Uh, total pension was, uh, but I do know it ended up at 65 grand and 30, 31 years. Let's just say it's about a million dollar liability. Now you multiply that million dollar liability for each and every employee, you've got something that is completely unsustainable. We don't pay our pension, purse pays our pension. That's not a liability of the district. Okay. It's a liability to taxpayers. It, it isn't. It's funded through CalPERS. They write the check. We've already paid for it. Are you, okay. Um, this obviously is an issue that is going to be moving large. The chief thinks that money just keeps coming. Um, the district, uh, uh, you know, California or I'm sorry, the county has plans for us. They, they have uh, given us, uh, assigned us 1,100 nonprofit units to be in our district, and they will not be contributing to uh, the tax base, and they will be using services. So uh, as all these expenses come up that you're looking at this evening, and I, I Please keep the big picture in mind. You, you know, there's just so much blood in that uh, turnip, or whatever. Whatever the, you can't squeeze blood from a turnip. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Is that it from the public? District matters. We have before us a purchase and placement. Of a memorial event honoring the founding district manager, Jenny Boulding. Uh, Eric? Sure. Uh, well, I, as I kind of put in the memo, and you can see the letter that was received from Jenny's daughter, Sally. Uh, she did pass on May 12th of this year. Uh, her family actually reached out to the district, contacted me directly um, with the idea and the hope and the desire that uh, the district would consider placing a bench in her honor in the spot that I uh, described in here, which would be immediately out the front doors. Um, there is a bench there now to replace that particular bench. That's the exact area they hoped that it would go. I told her the best I could do is bring this idea to the board and, uh, and see where that goes. Um, and that's what this is. So I've done, you know, kind of some of the research. I've talked to them several times, um, the bench, Granted, uh, unless you're looking at a color version, doesn't come out super great here. Um, set and done, total cost incurred, including shipping, would be approximately $1,100. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Um, is this bench um, identical to the ones we have out there? Uh, it is not identical. It is slightly different. The ones out there, you wouldn't really be able to engrave into. You could put a plaque on it, so to speak. Um, plus this one, those ones are made of wood with metal that the park department strips and stains uh, about every single year. 
this bench right here is actually made 100% from recycled materials. Uh, uh, requires none of that type of maintenance. I would do the coloring and the style looks as much like those other benches as possible, um, but it's not going to be an exact um, match. So I'm just going to say that um, I'm kind of concerned about the aesthetics of the um, front of our training center, and I would not want to have a bench that's different from others. And I would love, however, to honor uh, Jenny Golding because of her contributions to the community uh, uh, services district. And I believe that given her long service and dedication, we should honor her in some way. And um, I would suggest uh, placing a plaque, a plaque that, um, that's nice, um, on one of the benches we have and naming the bench, dedicating the bench to her, one of the ones that we have already, with, again, with a nice back. Just for, um, you know, aesthetically pleasing um, front of the community center. And I, again, I do acknowledge her contributions. I, I think it's fabulous what she did. Uh, gosh, I wish I could serve for 36 years. <laughs> <coughs> I don't think I have the help for it. <laughs> Anybody else? Sure. Yes. I, I, I worked with Jenny for years when I was on the board previously on Parks and Rec. And I, I, was, I remember going to her house. Her, what, the master bedroom in that model was the district office. Her husband kept adding other bedrooms around the house. But, uh, and and she, you know, she did a wonderful job for the district, I believe. But I find this request really sort of weird. Um, but I don't know, I think every, when I, whenever I walk, uh, there's like a promenade in uh, Tahoe City that's been built by the Tahoe City Public Utility District. And they're kind of like us. They don't have fire, but they have parks and rec, and then they do some water and sewer. And all along those walks, all this, they've done a beautiful job of fixing up their whole front of their whole town. And every six or eight feet, there's a plaque where something was dedicated in someone's memory or, or something like that. Uh, I, I think this idea in general is, is very, very nice and very appropriate. But for the, them to say, and we think the district ought to pay to, com to memorialize our mom is really weird. If they had said, we'll pay half or something like that, it would have made a lot more sense to me. I, I like your idea of putting a plaque like we did for Howard Council in the lobby, something like that on a bench. But I wouldn't like an oddball bench put out there that's different than what we have. And I don't know if we ought to be paying $1,100 for it. Thank you. Um, so I think this points to perhaps, you know, soon we should talk about a policy because this type of thing happens every few years. Um, so it'd be nice to have some consistency over what the board and the district does mm -hmm. in the event someone passes away and then you know to have a spot and a place and, and things. Um, so that's one thing that came to mind hearing these different things. On the other hand, I guess offering a different view, I see this and I would absolutely approve it. I think that the fact that everyone's gone to the work to finding it and it's replacing the existing bench. I mean, what we have right now is character. There is no uniformity within plaques and benches and various things we have around the community. And I think this is a very appropriate um, request and I think I don't think the cost is out of line with anything. I mean, I just, I sort of feel like it's a community service type of thing back and forth and uh, I, I would approve it as is, but I'm uh, certainly not. Yeah. I don't know, I, I t for me, it, it, it will, re it, there's the bench right out there front of the entryway that mm -hmm. it was going to replace so they shifted to put it someplace else but I mean I, I didn't know Jenny uh, I don't know when she retired she moved up to Sacramento that? somewhere in Sacramento area right? yeah. mm -hmm. I mean she did a lot of good things she dedicated basically her whole adult life to the community <coughs> but she did get paid for it. 
I don't know. I, I'm torn on this personally. Um, I just, I mean, it'd be nice to acknowledge her in some way, but I mean, we did, we she, did, dedicate she the did give to us the three and fifty. <laughs> oh, we did dedicate a trail to um, the horn. You want to give her a trail? Um, I'm kind of, uh, when it comes to what specifically it would be, I, yeah, I'm I open, uh, I want to hear what the family has to say, because again, I didn't know uh, Jenny, so maybe, you know, if she was a hiker, a hiker like Thomas, no, then I would have, uh, you know, considered a trail, but it I doesn't care. Talk to the family and make yeah, I, I can speak to that a little bit. I mean, the, the reason they want the bench and right there in particular is the, the last thing that she really did here before she left was kind of spearheading the, redo, the remodel of the entire community right. center. So that's what that letter says. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, which is uh, you know kind of that was her you know lasting thing that she really wanted to do before mm -hmm. she left because we had talked about it in the park or a different area. And they said you know we'd really like to have it kind of. I mean, they, she specifically yeah. talked about that quad area in front of the community center where right? I said, well, we can already have benches and kind of looked at this would be the best area. I guess the other thing to consider is, uh, I mean, if the financing of it is an issue, I can always simply go back to them and say the board uh, uh, would be willing to place a bench there if your family is willing to pay for it. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm not speaking for you because it sounds like there's some ideas that just don't want the bench there at all. Um, which is fine. This is why it's coming to the board, and why I was very clear to them that you know this is a matter uh, for the board to kind of decide. But because I would, I would love to honor her in some way. You know, that's that's the point I'm trying to make. Is that yes, I I do acknowledge her dedication and service, and would love to uh, honor her service in um, in a way. And given the preference for a bench near the community center, I I'm also all for it. I'm against um, placing a bench that's different from others at this um, cost. So I, again, would love to see a nice plaque saying, you know, I mean, we can discuss, maybe we can fit all this and, and place it on the, on the bench. Yeah, I have a problem with putting a bunch of different style benches out there. Those that's all kind of match. Exactly. Yeah. So that's one issue. But if you're saying that she was a spearhead of this remodel, well, the remodel of this facility, one of the things that happened is the courtyard between the two buildings got filled in with this classroom. And maybe this ought to be the Jenny Boulding classroom, just like the outside lobby is whatever we say about Howard Council. And, and we'll put a, a nice plaque on the wall that says that, and maybe list some of her service to the district. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just I think putting a, a different bench than what's already there is just sort of hodgepodge at our front door. I agree. So could we maybe go back to the family um, suggesting either the plaque on the existing bench or dedicating this room to her? Would that be acceptable to the board? Do I hear a motion? Yes, you do. I'll second. Why are you looking at me? What's the motion? Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, so I would love to make a motion to uh, for the district manager to please go to um, the family of Jenny Golding and suggest two alternatives or counter proposals. One of them would be to uh, place a plaque on uh, one of the existing benches um, in front of the community center. Um, alternatively, um, place a plaque in the um, classroom since this was part of her legacy. Second. Second. Any comments from the public? Yes. Yeah. Um, when she retired, from the district, did anybody give her anything to honor her? Yes, there was a reception for her. Yeah. There's a reception? Yeah. And a plaque? No plaque? Mm, can't remember. Because I really like Leah's idea of making a policy and 
I'm wondering if every district manager who retires should get a free dinner or a free barbecue or a plat on a trail or <laughs> something up here and there. And when they die, they should get a bench. I mean, that's ridiculous. What about board presidents? <laughs> they come and go all the time. <laughs> But no, I'm just, uh, like you were saying, there should be a policy because this is going to be crazy. Well, how are you going to determine when um, Mr. Horn dies, are we going to give him a bench? <laughs> you know, he's got a plaque on a trail somewhere. Uh, when you die, are we going to give you a bench? Uh, we'll you know, we'll, I don't like it at all. Stephen? Um, I think we're all more or less on the same page. I mean, we, we, we're looking at this different angles, but um, we all understand that there's a problem here. Uh, we value all our employees. Uh, Joel White just uh, retired. He gave a lot of service. Does he get a bench? Uh, Chief Roach, do we you know, do a bronze sculpture in front of that? <laughs> you know? I mean, how do you, how do you memorialize people? I, I really think that we shouldn't be in the memorial business. However, I, I don't have a problem recognizing people's contributions. And what I would really like to do, and I think it would be far more meaningful, is to um, have a plaque with, you know, listing Jenny's service, what she did, a historical, uh, you know, the history of Marinwood, and let's start building that, and building that for all employees who, who wish to contribute and, and be remembered. Um, I think that would uh, uh, enrich our community. Um, as far as naming this classroom, I guess that's, that's fine, um, but I do think that the policy should be, if you are going to accept these uh, memorials, that we shouldn't veer outside of the uh, stuff that we would normally do. In other words, if we're not trying, if we don't need a bench out front, let's not spend money on a new bench. Um, I do think actually benches are needed, but I would put them in the park. Um, I was surprised to see so many benches out here because a lot of people need to rest on their walks. But uh, in any event, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, Tom Horn's plaque kind of opened up a, a can of worms. Um, I don't, I, I think we should, we should remember Jeannie, but the best way we sh to do it is to, to put some meaning to the person and somehow place it in here uh, so people can understand the history of Marinwa. Anybody else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, Eric, you have your work cut out. Yeah, that'll be a fun phone call. Oh. <laughs> Anybody want to volunteer to make it as part of your motion? <laughs> hey, sorry about your dead mom. We're not going to hook you up. I'm surprised they asked it. I, I also find it kind of odd. Anyway, uh, next up is a resolution 2017-06, determining the fiscal year 2017-18 appropriations limit on tax proceeds. Sure. Uh, this is an annual thing. Uh, special districts are required to pass it. It is based on the prior year. It kind of carries over year over year based on factors delivered by the Department of Finance. You can see the uh, map that comes uh, about it in the secondary page. It's uh, kind of a convoluted bit of a formula, but everything basically comes directly from the Department of Finance and their finance letter that they issue every May. Uh, this is something that basically the auditor kind of checks off. It has been uh, done and adopted each year, and it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments? <laughs> Steven. Uh, yeah, uh, this goes back to what I initially said is we need to, we really need to rethink, fundamentally rethink 
uh, our finances here. Right now, we are, this Marinwood CSD is subsidizing fire service and park and rec service. We're serving other communities, people outside our district, people who are not paying taxes into our district, yet we're carrying all the, the uh, responsibility. It's wrong, it's unsustainable, and it's going to lead to bankruptcy. So, uh, you know, go for the money, go for the maximum money, but I would really be thrilled if, if you guys said, hey, we're going to try to live uh, within what we had this year. To be clear, this has nothing to do with what taxes will actually be received. This is strictly an appropriations limit that the state kind of mandates through uh, article whatever. This doesn't have anything to do with what the, the special taxes are. This doesn't have anything to do with what comes through in property taxes or gains or losses. This basically kind of sets the limit each year as to uh, the, the taxing limit. What we'll be taking in I, is actually less than that. The mention of subsidizing other people who aren't paying for their services, uh, I think that's sort of interesting. I know we, the fire, the fire department does mutual aid outside of our district. It helps people that doesn't pay any of our fire department uh, fees, taxes, whatever. But on the other hand, maybe we're lucky. Maybe Tom's doing a really good job because we haven't had to have all the other fire departments from Marin County come in here to stop something that was beyond our capability. But they're there ready to do it. I'd rather have them owe us and not have to do it the way they do. Similarly with Parks and Rec, it's my understanding that non-residents pay more than residents and it develops an economy. Okay, but it's still, it, but it develops then an economy of scale to allow us to have more programs for our residents than we would if we didn't allow non-residents to use our facilities. But when we don't properly account for our capital uh, depletion and future liabilities, we're the ones holding the bag. We're the ones writing the check at the end of the day. Yes. Thanks. favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next is the fiscal year 2017-18 publicly available pay schedules. Yeah, this is something that came out of the CalPERS audit we went through a couple years ago. Ultimately, every year the board needs to approve the pay schedule uh, and then it needs to be posted publicly. Um, we went through this probably a little less than a year ago. Uh, this is for the most part, that same information. Obviously, the board has increased the wage scales in a few positions. That's reflected in here. Uh, otherwise, uh, this is very much similar to uh, what you've already done. It's just a ministerial move that the board has to make every year and approves it, and then it winds up, uh, I'll post it once approved. Uh, may I suggest that um, a PDF of this will be posted on the website? Uh, it will be posted once approved. Mm -hmm. On the special section. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right under the last one that's on the website. Er, to be perfectly clear, of what you're saying is we're not changing anybody's salary, any salaries of any of the categories. All we're doing is putting it all in one place at one time as public disclosure. Correct. Public disclosure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did I need to make a motion? Make a motion, please. Uh, I make a motion to approve the fiscal year schedule as presented. Second. All right, first and second. Any comments from the public? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Authorization of contributions to district OPEP fund held by California employers and retiree benefits served. Sure. As I uh, put in the memo for this, uh, when you adopted the budget, it included a board recommended uh, a total of $60,000 be allocated towards the OPEB trust. The intention of that was to be uh, basically contributed in uh, sums of $5,000 per month. Uh, 
July is coming up. I'm just simply uh, trying to be a little extra transparent on this and saying this is your first chance to talk about your first contribution of that 5,000, whether you want to put that in there or not. Um, furthermore, what I would actually recommend, if there's going to be a contribution, is rather than every single month this goes on, I would say, I, uh, personally, to make a, uh, I am recommending that you take three contributions uh, as part of your motion tonight for the first quarter, being July, August, September, authorizing uh, the district manager to make those deposits during each one of those months, and then I would hold off until you get a chance to review uh, Q1 budget to actuals uh, as an income statement. Mm -hmm. Which will happen no later than November. I'd like to make a motion <laughs> to approve the uh, uh, our contribution amounts as presented by the district manager. Second. Any comments? Second. That we're doing this. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I would love <laughs> this is a step in the right direction, uh, and I would love it if we were pay as you go uh, district, um, but we're so far away from pay as you go, and without restructuring, uh, for example, uh, you mentioned without without restructuring, we're not going to. We're basically playing musical chairs with our employees. Some of them are going to get paid, and the others aren't going to be left out in the cold. If there is a, uh, if, for example, there is a recession in the future, uh, we may not be able to make our numbers. I am not in favor of this contribution until such time that we get our the the structure, our employee. Uh, I really get our finances in order, and then I would much encourage uh, uh, aggressive uh, pay down of this liability. I don't believe any of you are in favor of this, um, and I must be somewhat, you, you must think I'm somewhat of a Grinch, but in point of fact, I'm, I, I believe in our employees, and I believe that what they give us, we need to give back to them. Um, uh, in form of promises kept. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Well, I guess I'll just say that I really like uh, Eric's idea of every three months coming up with this, uh, you know, agreeing to it, but also the five, five, five. Yes, I, I like it. Um, I, in fact, I think this will help us perhaps stay within our means because if we know that we're going to be putting out 60 grand a year for this particular item, we'll have to hopefully keep our expenses lower so that we can meet that 60 grand. Well, that's, so that I, was the general idea when this whole thing came about. No comment. Okay. Anybody else? I call for a vote, and all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Update from Ad Hoc Committee to Review, Revise, Create, District Policies and Procedures. Discuss next projects. Um, so I do owe the board and the district manager a records retention policy that um, got off to a very messy start and uh, kind of turn me off. <laughs> so um, I have to bury my head in the sand and just plow ahead on this one. Um, other than that, I would be open to um, suggestions. It seems like Leah brought up um, an item of, uh, yeah. how, would you, how would you word, would you word it? Word uh, policy on? Recognitions? Yes. Recognitions policy, OK. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, also, you know, we've, I've spent many, many hours on the employee handbook, and so did Eric. And I am very frustrated with the fact that um, the labor group has been sitting on this for uh, um, 
since our last revision, I think it's been at least a quarter, if not half a year. September. September. So it's almost a year. And we have not heard anything. Whether they agree, disagree, want to proceed, not proceed. I'm, I'm done. I'm very frustrated and I'm done. Um, it's disrespectful, I think. Um, and that's why I would like to suggest that we write employee handbook for exempt employees only. And Thank you. the uh, labor group can do whatever they want because um, apparently the MOU overrides anything anyway. And um, having wasted so much time and not getting anything, again, it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, so if the board agrees, I would love to split the employee handbook into two. The one that we have control over and the one that we don't have control over. Um, lastly, after the re records retention and then employee handbook, I would like to start working on a strategic plan for our district. Because I think we should have some kind of, it's not a policy per se, I know. But I think it should be a kind of a deep breath, long-term planning process that would involve community input, the same way we had a meeting with, um, with community members regarding the shed. Um, I'd like to hear what the members of the community like. Would they like to um, you know, contribute more, maybe grow the community center? Or maybe they would want to scale it down? Or maybe they're just fine with the way it is? Um, are they fine with the facilities they have? Would they would they like to update them or you know not? It doesn't one way or the other. I would like to hear the feedback and then channel that into a more long term plan. Would that necessitate a special meeting? Possibly. But again, this is this is the you know item four on the list. So um, I will do the recognition and rewards retention policy, records retention policies first, then the employee handbook, if so, approved by the board, and then um, the strategic plan. Um, I think in order to split the employee handbook. Would you speak up? <coughs> speak up, please. In order to split the employee handbook, would we have to put that on next month's agenda for approval? Um, I would. My recommendation would be to seek a legal opinion on doing such a thing okay. um, and kind of go from there. Uh, obviously, the employee handbook is, it, it, you know, it's thick. Maybe it's um, taken them that long. And we have paid right. already for, for legal... Um, Compliance. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've already incurred the cost. And yeah. again, I am frustrated with the fact that we are being disrespectful. Yeah, I, I would just want to seek an HR legal opinion on uh, a handbook applying to only a subset of total employees. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to do that and report to you on that. I mean, obviously that would be a attorney client privileged information, so it's uh, closed. Uh, not necessarily closed. I mean, I can give you the information, but okay. it's, uh, I just don't know. I guess I've never heard of kind of such a, Thing. It doesn't mean it's not possible. I certainly relate with Isabella's frustration with it. I mean, it was one of the very first things when I started I wanted to see get accomplished. I think a ton of work and time has been put into it. I think it's a, a very, very good handbook that is in there, completely legally compliant with all modern day uh, HR and labor laws. Um, and it's a shame that it isn't simply been adopted and put into practice. Um, but I, I, I would certainly kind of start from there. Personally, it would be my opinion. I, I would want some level of a you know, human resources law opinion on, on such a thing and what kind of disclosures would need to go into. I, I think the development and, and I think approval of this document predates me. But it has never been approved. OK, well, what, I don't know. Again, I'm, I'm asking questions. And maybe it's going to relate to what Eric is going to ask. But why can't we adopt the document and then in our adoption just say that if, if it's legally possible that this is applicable to currently 
to all employees except for those in the bargaining group until and unless we do whatever we have to do to bring them into the fold or they do whatever they have to do to come into the fold. Uh, that, that's kind of exactly what I'd like to get opinion on. So yeah. we're all a little educated. I'm not an HR law professional by any stretch. Uh, I'd like to get some of that and make sure. I mean, the point of a uh, handbook is, you know, reducing liability as well as making, uh, you know, there are certain policies that are laid out within a handbook and procedures. And uh, right now, what we currently have is, it almost would be better to have nothing. So my, I, I guess what I'm, where I'm going is, if you if we could find a way to not have to adjust or amend this document. If it, right. if it yeah. seems to work, just in our adoption of it, we could give a caveat relative to the bargaining group, like I say, until and unless we all come together between us and the bargaining group, but let everybody else at least uh, have the, uh, I'll say the benefit of this document. Right. It, it's, I think people are happier if they know what the rules are that they're operating on. Yes, this thing has been going on for five or six years, and what I recall, at the very first, you know, first dozen board meetings I came to, people were asking almost every month, where is the employee handbook going? What's going on with the employee handbook? Um, I read the employee handbook from cover to cover. It's like teensy, 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 and it has so much uh, needed in it, and I had asked, three, four years ago, every few months, what about splitting the handbook into, oh yeah, we can't do that, oh yeah, we can't do that, let's talk about it, let's talk about it. I think you've got the idea down now that we definitely should split the handbook in half, or quarters, or whatever. You gotta get it done, because there's so much stuff that needs to be in there. Thank you. Okay, so uh, first up, employee handbook. I am in general agreement uh, with Herb and Linda. You, you, you got to get this done. You got to get something rolling here. Uh, the, the employee group is not playing ball. That may be another reason to reassess our relationship uh, with the, uh, the fire district. Um, but we got to get done. It's it's for everybody's benefit. It's even for their benefit. So, uh, you, you know, you just in negotiations, you got to be tough. You got to you got to you got to uh, be be willing to deliver uh, some terms. Um, so, uh, so that's item number one. Item number two, and this is in general. I don't see how we have a. Um, uh, an ad hoc committee with one person on it. Um, you need to to be keeping records, Isabel. If that's what you're you're up to, you need to produce reports. Uh, you're basically, uh, I believe, you're violating uh, the intent of the ad hoc committee uh, exception, and I think it's done for the purpose of good purpose to, to get things done, but this is a public body. You need to be public and disclose. Well, I, I understand, but... I'm not having any secret meetings with anybody. I fully understand, but for the public... Um, I the present, whatever I work on, I present, and you see when I hit a point where I find the document to be presentable and ready for public viewing, I present it, and you have ample time and opportunity to comment on uh, everything uh, I guess. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so let me, uh, yes. I understand you're working hard, and, and you're a hard worker, and I appreciate the hard work that you've done. I honestly mean that. However, um, this two, two sentence or whatever description gives nothing to the public. If you had because written a two, hold on for a second. If you, right if, you, if, if you had 
simply done a report of what you said verbally, then that information would be captured for the public record. You may not always be here. You, you may not always be here. And so your work would be, benefit people in the future. Now, I, this is, you know, st they do this in other districts. They, they write down, they produce reports or, you know, summaries of... Uh, so, Stephen, would you like me to produce a memo saying at 12 o'clock on Friday, I sat down for two I, hours... I don't, don't want you to be real. Morning. I don't know... Because that's really what's happening between, I have to, between the time I have to, uh, you know, go and get groceries and get my kids from school, I sit down and write on the right policies. Is that really... No, that hang on for a second. No, hang on for a second. What you presented verbally is completely acceptable. If you, I just, I want a record of it. That's all. Uh, it's not going to be cap. Your, your, it will not be captured in the minutes. Period. I would love to bet you money on this. She will say what she says, and she'll interpret. But you are the one. Well, then, if Would you do you not follow, to your point, please. if you do not follow the law, you need to start following the law, and I really mean that because this district has taken liberties, just outrageous liberties, uh, and, and and I just think that the, you've got to change. You've got to you've got to be more of a public body. Okay, then let's scratch number five. Let's take out ad hoc committee. Yes. So she won't have to produce reports? I mean, what, 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 it's not, you know, I, I don't think Steven, you understand what the role report of Report on Steven. what, for God's sake? What? Stop. Report on what? On, on what you said. Everything you said It's was going to be in the minutes. That's what minutes of the meeting are for. Minutes of the meeting are for uh, 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 items that actions that have taken place. Actually, we had no actions regarding this. We mentioned discuss next projects. That's what it says for people. Do you who not like to, to write write down your thoughts? Yes, I don't actually. I have other things that I need to do. So producing census okay, memos you for your can purpose. You consider if you if there, you manage okay, let's, let, me, let me put it this way. If you will Hold manage on. to have twenty people who will produce signatures and Beat and ask me for a memo on my activities, then I will be writing memos. Twenty people, please. Because for you and you're not I will a dictator. not be I know you I will not be writing a memo for you stop. personally. Stop. Stop. Please stop Thank arguing. You, please stop arguing. Can I Thank you. Question? Just uh, let it be. It's Stop arguing. <laughs> it relates to what's going on here. But I, I'm, what I'm wondering is, is, is this a, is what she is doing, she's doing it by herself, yes. right? She isn't doing it with another person? Correct. Why is it called a committee then? It, they can be, well, a committee can be of one person. I, I just wonder why it just, you know, she doesn't volunteer to take on this project. And she does it. When she's done with it or in the process, she comes before the board, which happens, and the document or whatever is presented. We talk about it. What we talk about goes in the minutes. We have We go through a whole process. So I don't, think, yeah. I don't need it. But okay. Call it journaling. Okay. Um, district manager's report. Sure. Um, well, just a couple of the things that I put in here, obviously, uh, with the OES and the FEMA claims, we're still kind of moving forward on that. Right now, kind of the big thing I'm waiting on are uh, actual inspection visits from FEMA representatives. Uh, even though they've been out here two separate times, this is from their uh, quote-unquote uh, uh, inspectors, so to speak, at which point... Uh, Right now, my understanding is we're really looking at the two creek bank areas as well as areas we've identified along the various fire roads um, that, that they still need to kind of provide, a, I don't know if approval is the right word, but final authorization that yes, this would fall under these categories of damage and should be considered reimbursable uh, damages as part of our open claim. Um, I'm waiting on them to set those dates. I do have a contactor and I do uh, communicate uh, back and forth. 
Uh, and right now I'm still just kind of waiting on those things. I haven't heard anything yet. Um, and then the other thing I am going to do is uh, reach out to a couple of different geotechs, the geotechs uh, that I have been working with back there just uh, have been fairly non-responsive in the essence that they're slammed out. So I'm still kind of waiting on a proposal that I've been waiting on for months. So we're just going to bring in some other people and say, hey, can you shoot me a proposal to do some uh, geotechnical studies back here that we can then base uh, repair plans upon. Um, and then the maintenance facility, I mean, everything is, you know, like I said, kind of still in here. I certainly have uh, been working on setting up meetings with a large range of various environmental groups. We'll get their feedback from there, any feedback uh, or uh, changes, alterations that it's needed can be performed. And then we'll look at meeting on a uh, informal pre-planning meeting with the county uh, um, and go from there. Along those lines, uh, I remember reading um, in the last months uh, after the Park and Rec Commission meeting the notation about there's something, you know, is it the county level or the state of California level where the water bar is involved? They have different people that come in and they review the plan? Yeah, there's various groups and so uh, that have some level of interest. Um, in things that happen within watershed areas. So we're working on meeting with those various groups. Some of these have already kind of been set. Uh, and we will certainly show them our plans, uh, site plans, where we're at, explain the history of the initiative, uh, at which point they provide kind of an informal level of feedback and considerations to take. This isn't, uh, you know, kind of any part of the formal permitting process. It's meant to inform you before you get to the formal permitting process, which can ultimately save you and they can Both guide us along that. Yeah. Well, they'll give you that feedback to take to consider as you make your application, and then at which point uh, various agencies certainly will be asked to review the application. Uh, so you take their feedback prior, saves you a lot of time and money later on down the line. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? The only question I have is um, I wasn't at the Park and Rec meeting, so I don't know how much is the cost estimate at now. I, I really don't have one. Oh, okay. Well, what was the last cost estimate? Is mm -hmm. it over eighty thousand? No, we haven't really estimated it past there. We haven't made it to that point right now. Eighty thousand has been budgeted from Measure A to go towards this. But I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even give you an initial number until we really start to work our way through these, through the pre-planning, and then get into the design stage. Well, Which we're yeah, just that, that makes sense, but I just thought that I had read in one of the minutes somewhere that it now looks like it would be more than 80000 uh, It could be. Okay. It could be, but uh, again... But there's I nothing, don't. until you do the plans. Right, right. Yeah, great. Thank you. Steven? Okay, well, first of all, I think all of you were at the meeting. Did you... Sense that there was a groundswell of support to put that maintenance shed where it uh, was. I talked to all the neighbors, and they're pretty much 100% opposed to it. Now, I also informed you all about the 100-foot uh, setback uh, uh, stream conservation ordinance. All of that land back there, and including up front near the horseshoe pit is within that 100-foot setback. There's no building envelope back there. There's only one area that I know of on this uh, chunk of property where we could put a facility It's next to the fire department. I know you have difficulty thinking about it, uh, Bill, but trust, I, I believe it can be done. We have uh, trucks uh, go back to the pool all the time, and it, it, to that, that makes a great deal of sense. But I also wanted to let you know that uh, if you guys were not aware, Lucas Valley Homeowners Association just recently submitted a large plan to redo their clubhouse and facilities and what have you. And the group, uh, the Miller Creek Watershed Alliance, which is an environmental group, Eric, are you paying attention? That is a group that you need to be talking to. Uh, Rachel Kamen is part of that group. Um, 
you may also want to uh, talk to some other local environmental groups. Um, I mean, uh, oh, I, what I was going to say is this, um, uh, the, the clubhouse renovation, they whipped through the plans once they found out that they were within the 100 foot uh, setback and the environmental problems uh, to do what they wanted to do would be too great. So, I don't think you need to waste a lot of time on this project. I think you have very clear direction due to the restrictions that you have on the site. I don't know, you didn't mention whether or not you have a site plan for over here. I would think that that would be one of the first things you'd want to uh, tackle. Um, if, and I, I do know how politics works in this county. I know you can find people to say, oh, don't worry, we're going to look the other way. Um, and you may, you might get, you go up a few rungs that way. But you, what you really need to um, understand is the community's against you, the National Fish and Wildlife uh, community will be against you, the EPA will be against you, you'll have to get an EIR. Um, you're, you're, just, you're, you're just asking for, you're just kicking a hornet's nest. The community is not against them. Okay, period. Okay, we don't. Uh, I, I beg to differ. All the neighbors who would have legal, legal presence, uh, they would, I'm pretty sure each one of them would, would join together in a legal action. Ten out of 2,000. Uh, well, okay. okay. So, um, so, go right ahead. Do something stupid if you want. I'm going to be on the other side of this. I don't want it to I don't want it to uh, be that way because I do think that there is a solution here um, that it won't cost the district too much money. But if you try to do something that's going to harm the environment and wreck our, our uh, facilities over here, you're going to have a problem. So, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Eric. Uh, fire, fire, fire department. Chief, uh, May was pretty busy getting ready for wildland season. Tested all the hose, the wildland packs together, had our type three, get a preventive maintenance check. Um, so we're kind of race ready for wildland season. We are, our department was also responsible for delivering the um, wildland training, block training to all the departments in the Central Wind Training Consortium, which was a lot of work done by John Papa McNeil, Papa Nick Love, Brandon Salvatel, and Ryan Brackett. They finished that up. Um, Tomorrow, Jeff Smith has his uh, engineer's interview and then his engineer's chief's interview with myself. He's the one remaining candidate for one position that's available. Um, so we'll see how that proceeds. Uh, continue to work on CERT projects. Uh, working with Mount Marin, Marin with NCSA 13 CERT groups. Continue to develop the trailer. Um, Worked with CSA 13 on a pretty successful vegetation management project. Kelby Jones, with the help of Tree Masters, did a nice fire break along the air, their interface homes. Uh, that should be finished next week. And tomorrow one is starting over on Heatherstone and Ironstone with North Bay Conservation Corps. It should be about two or three days over there. There's a lot of heavy brush that are moving. Um, yeah, the uh, kitchen remodel, we continue to meet with an architect. Hopefully by the end of next week, we'll have plans finalized. Um, where we go from there remains to be seen. Uh, I might be reaching out to Eric and a few of you to see where we go with that. In the meantime, we did get all of the floors in the firehouse have been refinished through a generous donation by a member of the public who's here at the meeting tonight, Thank you, Linda. Caesar Creek. Put a plaque in, in the floor. Yes. Oh, you have to find the secret initials. I can tell you that we did use a DIR registered company, um, and it was underneath the bid threshold. So I think for the most part we're within the SBA 54 so regulations. But yeah, it was. Uh, I, I wasn't sure what to expect, but I can tell you the floors came out very nice. They pretty much took up all the different types of flooring, carpets, tiles and uh, polished up the concrete underneath. So um, there's a small entrance. The entranceway still needs to be completed. We ran into some obstacles there, but hopefully that'll be done by the end of, or the middle of next week. So 
Uh, with that being said, the floors don't have to be worried about in the kitchen. I hired Dan, um, David Purcell, as a temporary firefighter to fill the open spot on A shift, um, with Captain Heine still being out on a disability injury, so we have three on that shift. We currently have three on each shift. I kind of felt the need to get up, up our staffing leading into wildland season, summer months, vacations are being requested. So Captain Heine's uh, injury is still kind of up in the air. I'm not sure when or if he'll return. Uh, that situation will play itself out over time. Um, we've been through this before and we'll wait to see. I'm hopeful he'll come back in the near future, but again, he may not. I don't know. Uh, I do have an eligibility list of some very Certified and qualified paramedics when we're ready to hire a full-time firefighter paramedic. I will probably coincide that with the next new hire academy in San Rafael, Large for Corte Madera, and us will be putting on probably in September. We'll have at least one, if not two, in that position. Because I have yet to uh, fill Joel White's position also. So we're, we're down Joel's position and Captain Heine's position. But since I hired David, we're only down to one position, which means the relief firefighter spot isn't currently filled. That's it. Um, we don't have any anticipated date. Uh, Captain Brain. His 4850 plays out at the beginning of October. And as these things progress, that's typically when a decision needs to be made. Okay. Although, like with Joel, that was kind of where it came to a head. With previous ones, it went on longer because there are the additional time. That bad. Um, if you would have asked me, Steve loves the fire service and he loves wildland season, I would have thought he'd be back by now because he's so passionate about it. But I think he's getting some feedback from his doctor that his knee's pretty messed up, and if he comes back to work, he's risking further injury. Mm -hmm. So I think he's really weighing that right now. Um, I reach out to him weekly, I hear back from him after his doctor's appointments. So, you know, I, I think he's kind of struggling with what he should do. Well, I think at the end of the day, it's not his decision. He's not medically cleared to return. Right. Okay. And he can't return until he's medically cleared to return. All right. What did I ask? Sure. Yeah. Question. Who, who's the architect you ended up with? Um, Chris Comanges, he's out of uh, Bumber and Keys. He lives. At, he actually lives in CSA 13. I can forward you his business contact. I want to like Comanges and Sons. He came in at about a third the price of everyone else as a neighborhood favor. And the other quotes you had appeared to be people looking to make a big project out of a little project. Correct. <laughs> Can I ask a couple questions? You may. Thank you. Um, you were talking, you mentioned strike team. Last year, we had to excuse ourselves, except for one time. Are you going to be doing that again this year because of not just staffing? Um, I think we'll just have to see how the fire season plays out and what our staffing level is at that time. Uh, kind of wait. Caesar Korea is expecting twins uh, at the end of June, beginning of July. So he's hoping to take some time off. You know, yeah. Sean Day's getting married at the end of the summer. So. You know, there's, you have to weigh these options as things come up. That's one of the reasons I brought David in, is because I'm hopeful that we'll be able to participate. But again, it's okay. something that has to continue in. The only other thing I wanted to ask about is, behind the homes on Ironstone Court, why are we paying for clearing that? So, I get, a, people reach out to me all year about having projects done. Yeah. So, and I, pretty much tell people that, uh, you know, this is your responsibility to create a defensible space for your property to help the fire department when we have our needs. But I also, we also get about 10, we budget about $10,000 each year for projects. And as these requests come in, I kind of consider what's the biggest bang for the buck that we can get. And this is a guy who's lived in the community for 45 years and he's cleared his backyard and his projects for 43 of the years. But unfortunately, a couple of his residents, they got old overnight, as can happen to us. And uh, so when they came to me with this project, I decided it was something that would be worthwhile. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Steve? Yeah, um, so at the beginning of this uh, kitchen project, uh, 
that I'm calling the Martha Stewart kitchen. Uh, it, you know, there were different ways to go. And one of the ways to go that would save the district tons of money is if you put in freestanding uh, cabinetry that you could have delivered and not pay the exorbitant, uh, whatever they call that type of labor that we're uh, hiring. I figure you could save probably, you know, in the tens of thousands of dollars. Um, I'm just wondering why that never was considered. I mean, well, because you could do, you see, I, I, I hate to interrupt you, but I'm just going to tell you it's something that I'm considering, but it's not a decision I'm comfortable making alone, which is why I'll be reaching out and discussing it with Eric and some uh, one or two of the board members in private. So, Because if you're buying furniture, that's it's a lot cheaper. And if we're going to buy a stove and we're going to buy a, yes. So it's something that I'm going to talk right. over with my manager. But I've been kind of gathering that information as we met with the architect. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Oh, that's it. Park and Rec. Shame. Well, it's to be determined. Oh, you know what? I, sorry, I have one more thing. Eric and I had had some discussions with Chief, Chief Gray about the paramedic thing. He's very interested. He's available. He wants to help make it happen. Um, and he wanted me to express that to you guys here. Um, and I think Eric would echo that sentiment from Harvester. Yeah, we've learned a lot with anybody. We've worked on setting up a meeting. We had a meeting scheduled to help her. Yeah. He's willing to help out anyway. He very much wants to see the paramedics be implemented and wondering why they haven't yet. We've so, been waiting two years. Yeah. Uh, he's been a nice resource, a good resource. There's been some very valid questions that have mm -hmm. come up uh, regarding, uh, you know, kind of the, the uh, medical direction that they provide and he's been very forthright in answering them and we've been very forthright in sharing those responses. So he uh, is willing to attend and help in any way possible. Chief Gray's a good guy. I'd love to help. have it. Yeah. Uh, and then just in response, uh, the first Tuesday of July is July 4th, so they just haven't set. Chief Chris Chief Gray. Gray. Who? Chief, Chief Gray, Gray from Center Fell Fire Department. Oh. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would. Uh, let's see, we've got a review of the draft minutes. Any questions? No. Part of it. Yeah, I mean, actually, I had some questions. What has been discussed in the Park and Rec Commission concerning the uh, maintenance show? This the, the minutes we're reviewing uh, okay. right now. But but shouldn't that be reflected in the minutes? If it, wasn't? it is in the minutes. Top of page two. Sorry. I don't have it in front of me, but um, maybe you can just verbally tell me what was the discussion. Um I think there's a brief discussion about location of the uh, park maintenance. On the top of page two, if you look at it, um, a couple of people inquired about, since they weren't at the meeting, inquired about the discussion that happened during the meeting about uh, the new shed. Um, they weren't happy, you said? No, they just, there was just some discussion back and forth about it. Well, could you... I mean, there wasn't any deep discussion on it. People just kind of wanted an overview of what happened at the meeting those who didn't attend. And so we just went over the three locations that were discussed. And they didn't discuss the locations? Not in depth, no. We were mainly there just to review Creekside Park and go and look at the, um, it was a, one of our tour. Okay. I, 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 you know, to echo what I said earlier, I really think it's very important that the Park and Rec uh, Commission understand what the laws are for that, that site. It's prohibited, period. There'll be an EIR required. There'll be all kinds of scrutiny there. And it won't be, hey, can you uh, give me a permit up at the, the, okay. the uh, county? So, um, anything else? 
Um, no, just that, yeah, we spent most of our time uh, touring Creekside Park. Um, I think overall the commissioners were happy with the shape that things were in, um, knowing that we have a tennis court resurfacing job that's going to be happening, or code of I should say, happening late this week, I believe they're starting. Creekside. Any, anybody else have anything on the minutes? Uh, on the comment that Shane just made, uh, I asked him, I went up to look at the big oak tree. A neighbor made a comment, they were, saw a bunch of dead branches up in the tree and they could fall and hurt someone. And maybe they could if there was a, if they were rotten enough and at some point they'd have to take it care of. But I, it was the first time I looked at those tennis courts in a number of years and I was sort of surprised at the condition of it. Uh, and uh, what uh, Shane said is uh, some expert gave an opinion as to the condition of the uh, surface. And uh, I found that the expert was Gary Harrelson, who, who had no information whatsoever. But I brought for Shane tonight the, the real plans from when they were built. That, sort of contradicts exactly what uh, Gary was saying. I've had a chance to review these, so I can't comment. Yeah, but that said, there, there, there's some, I don't know why there's some major cracking in that cord, in those, on those cords. And there's probably ways to, to patch, which I guess is what this guy's gonna do, with some fabric or something. But also I noticed that the last time they were surfaced, it appears that the contractor didn't properly clean off the old surface before he applied the new one. You want to know who the contractor was? Gary Harlson. <laughs> well, my point is, the, the, the current, whoever's going to do it now, really needs to, I don't know, sandblast or somehow get that old surface off, or it's all just going to be peeling up. Yeah, this, the guy we're using, Adam's uh, surfacing, is the kind of go-to guy that everybody uses. Um, they take their time and, you know, they don't make any promises. It's basically, you know, they go through a patch and try to fill in, like, level in areas as much as possible. But it's, at the end of the day, you know, it's a coating, like a paint job over the top that just buys you a couple more years before you have mm -hmm. to really do some work. I've been always told that the, because the cords are on landfill, it's kind of uh, uh, impacting the rate of deterioration. Yeah. yeah, it is a non-fill. It's in the exact same soil condition as the other two courts. It's on the alluvial plain to either side of Miller Creek. Mm -hmm. And uh, the detail that uh, Shane now has shows that there's a, about a 14 inch pavement section underneath those courts that was all supervised by a geotechnical engineer for compaction and everything. And so I don't know why it's cracking, but it sure is. But the, the more current thing is, is like I say, the latest layer is peeling off. And if they're just going to paint over it, it's just going to be peeling off and nothing is flat. It needs to somehow be sandblasted or cleaned to get any of the loose stuff off there first. This is the same company we've used. Um, you know, they recently did the two courts uh, closest in this part. And prior to that, they did the two courts on the other side of the creek over here. And they certainly took a lot more time than I expected them to. Uh, um, without really jacking up the cost at all, you know, really filling in some of the parts that had kind of sunk in or whatever the case may be. I mean, they scrape off. They, they're not just going to paint over a bunch of chipping stuff, because to your point, okay, oh, that's, that's my good. concern. Just so we yeah. have that covered in the contract. With them. Yeah, and just note, they did put it in the contract and reiterated with all the courts that we have done that this is just a, you know, a buy you some time fix. You know, eventually the courts are going to have to actually be redone. You know, so instead of spending seven thousand, they're spending you know, eighty thousand or whatever the going rate is for courts. Um, so just keep that in mind. This is a, I, this may be a little bit out of turn, but it's concerning tennis courts. Um, pickleball uh, for retirees. There's like this craze going on. It's pickleball, and you're seeing uh, it's starting to take off in San Rafael. Leagues are forming. It's like the thing, especially for former former tennis players. Um, it's low impact, um, and you can get two pickleball courts for one uh, tennis court. I would really love to see the district um, step up its commitment to the seniors, uh, have park benches, but and also. Uh, 
things for them to do, like pickleball. Um, we could, it, it, it really wouldn't cost that much. It's a matter of putting up a fence and a net, and uh, I'm sure you're going to find there'll be a lot of people interested in it. There's a course now being given in San Rafael, and my neighbors are in it, and they say it's just crazy. So, um, and if you go down to all these vacation spots, retirement communities, that's what they're doing. So, I, I, I would love to see you guys make that commitment to the seniors. Thank you. Um, fiscal year 2000. I have one more. Okay. Uh, I, just, I was asking Shane about the landscape firms along with the Zelda Road that's in front of the United States. Is that coming still? Yeah, it's still coming. Oh, wait. Okay. Uh, fiscal year 17 18 measure A work plan. But so each year the board uh, adopts and approves a work plan. Uh, what I am recommending, what staff is recommending with this year. I mean, if you read the memo, I'm not going to completely uh, go through it, but it very clearly lays out as well as this uh, a historical measure a uh, revenue as well as expenditures uh, where we kind of sit and where we're at. Um, to Shane's point, what was talked about, the, the, the work to the Creekside Tennis Court was already part of the work plan from this previous, this current year that we're in. That'll be happening uh, when it's said and done. We'll have a total of about 193,000 uh, and change available through the course of this fiscal year. That counts what we're expecting in revenue as well as funds that have carried over. Um, the work plan I would recommend or that I do recommend is. Uh, Right now, the only item on the work plan should be focusing on the park facility uh, replacement. Um, once that is completed, the next major project is going to be looking at uh, replastering the pool. And that is not a cheap endeavor for a 200,000 gallon size pool. Um, so I would earmark future funds towards that. I've spoken with the county and with the parks department liaison who works with agencies in Measure A. And, He's um, had no qualms and felt that was a perfectly acceptable work plan as well. With that said, we can always amend it throughout the course of the year as uh, if and when needs arrive, much as what was done with the, when we purchased the park truck. Cool. May I make a motion to approve the work plan and budget? Measure funds? Okay. Uh, questions? Yeah, um, on the park maintenance truck for 28K from the memo, um, were there like $6,000 added cost in? We didn't apply that towards Measure A. Oh, that's not for Measure A. Correct. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, okay. Only the purchase of the truck. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Stephen? I would like to suggest that you get a trailer. Um, as soon as you can and get rid of the dump truck. You'll save on whatever insurance you're paying for the dump truck and you'll have a more practical uh, work vehicle that you can leave on site, carry tools around, and also save the truck from uh, excessive wear. Uh, I mean, the capacity, uh, that truck could carry uh, almost the same capacity as the dump truck. Uh, so. Uh, you're just basically wasting money uh, keeping that dump truck. Uh, a new trailer would cost you a couple of grand. Okay. Anything else? A call for a vote. This was added uh, on the request of uh, Irv, uh, and obviously uh, I know we've had some levels of conversation, and I think he might have even had some levels of conversation and communicate with Shane since then, but it's on the agenda so it can be properly uh, discussed and talked about. So at this point, I would uh, 
probably just turn it to Shane to give an update on where this currently stands and what the plans and actions are, and then field questions from that. Um, yes, so the berms, um, the bane of my existence. Um, if you remember, about three months ago, we had our landscape contractors go out and start work on actually pruning the berms, which hadn't been done in years. Um, you know, before that, they'd gone through and just mowed the weeds basically underneath. Um, and then within six hours of them starting, we had several homeowners calling down air, one showing up saying they're going to sue us, you know, freaking out kind of like what with, with the county did on Lucas Valley Road, although we weren't taking up, limiting up trees 20 feet, we were them up three, four feet. Um, so we stopped the activity at that point until people could come voice their concerns to the board. Um, and since then, you know, we kind of gotten, have gotten feedback all over the place from don't touch it, it blocks my house, to clean it up and make it look landscaped. And, you know, it just varies. Everybody wants something different in front of their house. So I decided, made the decision that it wasn't a good idea to have land design go through um, and do the, the initial pruning. Um, our park guys are going to start on that next week um, so that I can be there and we can kind of go through a little more meticulous. Um, Land, you know, get a landscape look, but also keep in mind that people, you know, do use it as some form of privacy uh, from Lucas Valley Road. Once we complete it, I'm gonna have land design come out, look at, you know, the standard that we want them to keep it at moving forward, um, and so that's kind of where I'm at with that. It's gonna take because it hasn't been done in so long, and there's a lot of dead material, and there's at least five dead trees. Um, Working on and off since we can't be there at all times, it's still going to take us about three to four weeks to complete it. So we're going to be starting on that next week. So he answered my quest all my questions before I even asked it. My concern was we had that meeting a number of months ago, and I didn't see anything happening. Uh, they cut the weeds, the weed whackers, in, in one salt section between the, uh, the easterly end and Bridgegate. And then it looks like this last Friday, they did the section from immediately easterly of Westgate. But there's still a whole section in the middle they have yet to do. Um, yeah, I was just recently out there. They've done the majority. They've done like two thirds of it. Yeah, like two thirds. Um, and along those lines, you know, it's the contractors aren't super happy uh, with us. They're not super happy with them. Um, Originally, when they signed the contract, you know they were able to spray, which obviously um, is a lot more efficient for them. Um, so you know when they're signing, you know, when they're contracting with us, they allocate a certain amount of time, a certain amount of guys, and by not spraying, um, you know they haven't changed the amount of time or the amount of guys, but the results obviously are you know there's weeds. So it's something uh, I feel like we've been working together fairly well over the last three or four months. Um, but I think at the end of the summer, they would like to um, come to a board meeting and uh, discuss the contract. Um, so I'm thinking it's going to cost us more money um, after the summer if we want the level that we were expecting when we first signed the contract. Or we can explore. They were, I think, the lowest bidder. Uh, I believe they were the lowest bidder. And the majority of the bids were double back then. So just something to keep in mind. Shane, would you be able to tell us the number of work hours or FTE equivalent kind of thing um, of the, in terms of the dependent to the land design spends on our district? They're here, as far as their hours, they're here every Friday for approximately six hours. And how many people are these? They average three. Three percent. Do we, do we contract by the hours for them or, or by the results? By the results. For nine So results. everything that is on the contract, basically, you know, they check the box and say, yeah, we can do all this for X amount of, you know, the hours and time are irrelevant to us. Yeah, you know, it's the result. It's the result, which when they initially started for the first, you know, year and a half, everything, you know, we had a few hiccups, but well, there's areas that weren't getting, that weren't in the contract that some people that stand out that weren't getting done, but aren't actually in the contract. Um, so if we do visit the contract, there's some areas that, you know, kind of no man's land uh, that we, you know, thought they were covering, but after reviewing the contract, they haven't been. It's not that many areas, but 
the pruning along Miller Creek Road past the community center, for example. They do the pruning basically to the tennis courts, but they don't do really anything past that except for weeds. Um, and I can't find anything in their contract showing that they're re responsible for that. So. Oh, anyway, I, may I? Yeah. Okay, I, but I think the concept is good, that our guys are gonna sort of set up a model for them, and they'll continue, because it's just, it's really deplorable, the condition. It just, it's a mess. And that wasn't ever the intention, or, or the agreement the district had with the uh, county uh, who required the, our property, the Lucas Valley Estates, to be annexed to the district for parks and recreation services and fire protection. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of like um, uh, sh shrub oaks and scrub, yeah, scrub there's oaks. There's all sorts of volunteers. Volunteers that are just everywhere that are growing. So basically trees that we have to you know, remove, yeah. but people have become accustomed to them blocking their you know, house work. So it's, it's okay. going to be interesting, but we're going to go through and... Okay, but how, my concern is uh, how can we keep the heat off of you so you can get your work done without everybody and, and, and their uncle screaming they want it done a different way? Well, so our goal is going to be there's obviously two sides to that berm. Mm -hmm. um, the side on the homeowner side, you know, is less concern of the people in Lucas Valley in general want it, want it landscaped from the feedback I've gotten. The people that live right adjacent want it as full as possible. So the side along Lucas Valley Road, we're going to do a little more work on. The side's closer to their houses, where it doesn't affect anybody but the people that live there. You know, we're going to talk to them a little bit if they have some concerns, and maybe not cut as far back. Because some, I mean, that there's there are some houses that if we were to you know limb up even two feet, three feet, they're going to be people are going to be able to see into their house as they drive by. And I know that intention wasn't a screening necessarily, but that's what it's become. Well, I'm just concerned again. If they start screaming so you can keep working. We'll refer them to the board. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's basically. I have no problem with yeah. that. We're going to go in at like 1 in the morning. Yeah. Do a covert off. I mean, at the end of the day, it's Shane, right. you know, they're, they're going to come out. They're going to, I mean, you know, I, I've been out there. I've walked that entire stretch with County BPW, with Damon Connolly, with members of the LVE uh, HOA, with Bruce, with Liz. Every single one of them that certainly has a different idea on kind of how it should be, and I thought we had a very good agreement that was formed in there that the county was going to go through as they were doing all of that, and they just kind of kept getting so many uh, hits from various residents in there that eventually they just kind of looked into it and said, you know what, this one's on the CSD, we're not even touching it. Yeah. We've done our work, we're walking away. I mean, we had a very set cut plan that, again, the HOA was on board with. Uh, Connolly helped kind of facilitate the director of DPW for that division of DPW was out there. Shane and I were out there and it made a ton of sense on where to go and what to do with it because it certainly was a different set than what was just along uh, <coughs> Lucas Valley Road up until, you know, Mount McKinley or whatever that last road is before you leave CSA 13 and go back into LVE. So it was... Uh, it, it wasn't going to be that kind of clear cutting, but uh, again, I, I think it just became more of a headache to them than it was worth, and they kind of looked into it and said, you know what? Well, they, and they thought it was our property. Right. But they knew that. It was their property. It was our district's responsibility. Right. right. Originally, you know. But they knew that when we had that meeting. Well, they found that irrigation, which was the. Right, but they the still knew that going into that whole. Uh, meeting and where everything was at there, they just also recognized that, okay, this is my design. What we've just trimmed up was you know, developed over 50, 60 years of Well, that, that's growth. not really true. They just don't have the historical knowledge. Right. The district used to maintain all of Lucas Valley Road on this side uh, from the kind of the end of Elvia, uh, or the Elvia, whatever, that last where the landscaping starts down at that end all the way to the county farm. And we have this one old guy who used to get out there with a wheelbarrow and a bunch of hand tools, and he kept it all kind of trimmed up. Mm -hmm. And he put all the trimmings out on what's now the bike lane, and the county came along and got rid of it all for us. But we kept it all trimmed. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Now I have two questions. First, do I have to be a board member to get anything done in the neighborhood? Thank you. Um, I would like to know up 
in your neighborhood, when they whacked all the weeds, did they just leave everything on the ground? Or did they pick it up and take it away? No idea. No I, idea? I don't see a lot of stuff around. I don't know if it just what it blends Do you in. know, Shane? Um, I know they remove some of the, the weeds as they go. They use like the burlap sacks and remove them. There's a, I mean, they're weed whacking quite a bit of square footage up there. You can just weed whack it and leave it. And this is the landscape company that's working, right? Yeah. At $40 an hour. Whatever it is, I don't know. $40 an hour per person. And they're leaving the crap on the ground. Uh, Just yeah. like they do it in the pedestrian lanes. Yeah, they shouldn't be. I mean, in their contract, they're, they're supposed to blow it in the burlap sacks or something kind of like that to remove it. The county leaves all theirs. Yeah. It's in the contract. They're supposed to pick up all the debris. And yet, you agreed, it clean, I think you agreed last year that they could blow it into the panhandle. And one thing that's been happening to me, because I happen to go in and out of the area that has the most blown in leaves, is the leaves are getting to be this tall. And I've slipped several times. This is the, the pathway that goes right into the maintenance shed from, Quietwood to, uh, from Pinewood to Quietwood. And the leaves are this tall and very easy to slip on, especially in the winter, but now. I almost brought a bag in for you. But well, I never told it's them. Dangerous. Well, I definitely never told them to blow anything into the panhandle. You told me that it was okay if they did because I was complaining all the time. Okay. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to go over and take a look and see where the leaves they are. They do it from. all the time. Well, they only blow up there once every um, six weeks. But can we get back to the terms? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I, I do want to comment on what she's had to say, but I'll wait. Okay. We're discussing firms. This is firms on. Yeah, I don't want to get off the track here. Um, recreation and park maintenance activity report. So we we can talk. I'm just kind of curious. Did you want to discuss about the firms? No, you're okay. moving on to the next subject, so I, right. I just... We're done with the berms. We're okay, I, but I wanted to talk about the, the walk street and the, the maintenance. But that's not what we're talking about. But I will get a chance later. Okay, fine. Right, right, right. Yeah, so um, summer started for us this last Monday. Um, the camps have all begun. Um, swim lessons, all of our summer classes. Um, Everything has been going well, it's been super busy. Um, our registrations have been pretty incredible this year. Um, so everyone is hard at work. We also start our first um, Music in the Park series next Friday, the 23rd, here at Marinwood Park from six to eight, um, which is a popular event. Um, in addition to all the things that are going on for summer, we're also, when time allows, working on our fall programming. Um, because we have to get all that information in for our minimum review um, in about four weeks. Um, that's kind of it with recreation. I mean, just full summer implementation right now. Any direct questions? Yes. Um, what is the cost of learning the review, including shipping? I'd have to look it up. Um, I, I think, you know, with, as we move to a digital age, I think we should really scale down on, on the marine review. I, I think it's um, it's costing um, you guys a lot of time and energy to put this together, I think. And um, then it's the expense of printing. Um, I know that we offset it partially, probably, by advertising. We're not expecting it to be full, right? Um, and we spend money on shipping. I do understand that this is our marketing um, expense, but, um, I, and I know that there will be always people who prefer paper over website. Um, seniors sometimes don't have access to computers, etc. So I understand that maybe we have to uh, make you know, a batch, a small batch. Um, I would love eventually to see you know, 90% of our marketing happen digitally. 
Um, and I think you, you do a very good job via social media. Um, but the website should be really the go-to place, not the Marangu Review. Um, I'm sure you're aware of the fact that the more uh, often we update the content, the, the better rankings mm -hmm. we get. Um, so, um, you know, ideally if you touch a website every day, it's perfect. Um, and so this is really, um, this would be an easy way for us to you know, save money on, on killing trees and um, channel the attention towards the website. Um, and again, I, I understand that there are seniors and we, we should probably have a couple of brochures maybe focusing to, on senior programming, um, you know, at the, at the counter here so people can bruise, register right here, um, you know, that would be a convenient thing, but it, you get what I'm playing now. Yeah, so, I would always say this. Ideally, I, I agree with what you're saying, and in most instances, you're absolutely right, and everybody's kind of winging themselves off of the paper. Um, however, uh, which is kind of been a shock to me, because we actually gauge this each year. Um, our review, we only really, beyond murder, we only really send the review out to the masses for the summer version, because it's got our camps and programs in it. Um, and we are getting, like 10 times return on investment with the review. Uh, how, so how do you make this? We point? were able to look at, for instance, just one registration this year from one person. We talked to one family from Novato um, who never knew about our programs and got a review because we were talking to them on the phone. There's an $8,000 registration right there which covers the majority of the cost, or at least the majority of the cost of printing the review. Um, we hear stories like it all the time. Like brand new families just for summer camp. So and how do they get the Because the we mail it. The summer one we expand. We do like Southern Novato um, and over the hill into Terra Linda. Um, because otherwise people people that come here know about us and people in the Dixie School know about us. Um, but that's still kind of our only, it's our main way of reaching people outside of the district. Um, and so I mean we've, we've gotten not countless but I mean we're probably I'd say, if, let's say we spend ten thousand dollars on the summer review, probably brings in closer to thirty, forty, fifty. It's pretty over the years. It's been pretty amazing how, and we're also part of a company called Learn, which is like a recreation marketing um, group that's um, it's all data driven by universities, and they're still saying we're still like two or three years away from getting rid of the review and going digital or almost fully digital. I would agree with you in most regards, but when it comes to camps, the parents want to grab it. And because our camps are so large and vast, there's you know 25 different options. They pick it up, they go through it. It's still you know attention grabbing. Could we move to once a year, just the summer camp? Well, the other, the other review is basically for the residents. Uh, when we, do, we used to do four. Yes. Went from four to three, and now we're to two. So we've been reducing every year, because I do agree with you, like the trend is heading that way. Um, but the summer one is, is just return on investment, just makes sense, um, at least at this point. I know it's getting more and more digital. Um, I think it would help if ActiveNet was more as a friend. <coughs> well, that too. And everybody's, ActiveNet's just buying up every registration company. And basically, there's two registration companies left at this point. There used to be 10. 20. Um, so I think everyone's going to be stuck with that. So now. basically we're not there yet. No, but I agree with you, but we're, we're headed in that direction. I would suggest to Isabella is uh, one of the things I've always noticed with our review is we add a lot of anecdotes in there. Stories, things that are going on, meet the staff, fear something else. I, I would weed a lot of that stuff out. I mean, if you look at, say, Santa Bell's similar item, it's classes, maybe a note from the director, and that's it. I mean, it is literally a third the size of ours. Um, you know, you're paying per page, paying per weight for the mailing for everything else. I, I do think there's ways that could trim it down, and I would get rid of some of those kind of anecdotal uh, items that we also tend to include over time in there that sometimes have grown that I don't know that those are really getting read or looked at, I don't know how much value they add to it. We're gonna try to turn it into a magazine when really, to Shane's point, 
it's a place that contains a boatload of information about a lot of different camps and programs in one spot. So I think we can certainly look to, okay, what kind of little anecdotal things are we adding in here in terms of stories or staff stories or this, that, or the other thing, uh, uh, and get, get those out of there. Now, you, you mentioned that there is like a 3 to 1 return on investment on, on the summer one, uh, but there is no uh, data for the winter one, correct? Right? The winter one is in the it's a cheaper it's cheaper to produce because it's smaller. It only goes to you know we don't send it out to like Southern Nevada. It, it doesn't here. have to go off here. I mean, maybe we to can move. cut it out. Maybe um, I think last time I had Paul look, I think our um, ads are paying for like half the cost of that one. Mm -hmm. So it's not a it's not a big cost. Um, it does help with like our classes, you know, right when school starts, because parents are tend to be super busy. They don't necessarily aren't looking online for things, and they get it in the mail. Um, I just I just wish that we could channel more traffic on. on, on well, I, well, I mean, and, and the brochure definitely brings in a lot more traffic on our website because our website's plastered all over it. And then when you want to actually register for something, you're going online, you're signing up for Facebook to get you know updates. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they're working in tandem pretty well and like I said we've been weaning ourselves more and more off of you know the paper production um, and eventually we probably will be doing more. Thank you sir for taking up That's okay. Questions? Yeah. I have one other revenue idea uh, with camp starting. Um, parking, parking spots in the fire station and like right in that front parking lot if you could rent like time sensitive, kind of like an app or something, where at peak times you charge money to guarantee somebody a parking spot. Um, How much are you going to get? Hmm? How much are you going to pay? Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to. I mean, I don't know, but the convenience of it, the knowing about it, you know, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, if you need the parking spot, you just pull right up in front of the firehouse. <laughs> you leave your car there for as long as you need to. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and the parking across the street. That's for free for you. Okay. <laughs> Park right in front of right in front of my car, no problem. Maybe we get a CIT valet program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have Sean come out and wash it while we're waiting. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, the Marinwood Pathways, um, you write here that we um, budgeted $7,500 and if the um, quote came at 15000 <coughs> Um, so what does it really mean? Are we going to do only half of it? Are we going to so um, go No, not necessarily. Um, we put in the seventy five hundred dollars kind of last minute, um, looking at okay, what are like the real hot spots that we are going to need to look at? This company came back and said we can do everything, which was a you know everything in the community, the pathways, the sidewalks, all in front of the community center, all the way down past the tennis courts near the bus stop at the entrance to Renard River by Renard Market. So, you know, three, four times a larger area than we were expecting with the 7,500. Um, and we still don't have to do that, but we had them come out and just kind of survey everything, and that's the price they came back at, came back with. That's for the concrete wall price. So, again, what are we going to so do? So, I don't, we added that $7,500 kind of at the last minute for areas that we thought were most in need of repairing. So are you going to just do the areas and then pay the 7500 or do you want to do half of what we... I'm just bringing it to the board at this point. Um, we, haven't, we haven't made a decision on anything. Gotcha. What does that entail? The shaving like they did before? Yeah, so it's... Make it... <laughs> make it... Semi... <laughs> semi <laughs> it's, it's, it's shaving um, and then it's also patching um, some of the the sidewalk where it's in worse condition. Some areas, it's not like a full repair. You know, mm -hmm. they're not throwing, you know, digging it up and putting down and framing mm -hmm. it, putting new sidewalk in, mm -hmm. just making it quote unquote safe. Um, but I thought it was gonna be a lot more uh, to do the whole kind of districts, all of our property. And I was kind of surprised that, I think they were here for four days surveying it, walking it. So, yeah, I really, so I really thought it was gonna come back a lot more expensive. But, and I think they found 400 areas or so, some absorbent amount of, of safety oh, areas. Those are the hundreds line. and hundreds of areas that they'd be doing. Uh, question? Yeah. Or, what about the asphalt concrete paths in Lucas Valley Estates? Uh, when I, I thought about that, they're, they're 30 years old this year. Yeah, they're ready. 
We, uh, that came up during our commission meeting, and uh, no, that wouldn't be included. That's a separate issue unto itself. Well, I know it's a different kind of construction, but I'm just suggesting that it needs to be looked at to do some repairs. Yeah, we have looked at it, and, and again, this is in years past, and you know, when I was just kind of along for the ride with like Gary and Tom Horn, um, they did bring up that it's gonna be a nightmare access-wise back there, because you can't really get much back there, um, the way it's designed. Um, so, but yeah, at some point we're going to have to have somebody come look at it and price it out. Well, someone just did the paths at the, at the county farm. They just, I don't know if they surfaced all of them or just patched the bad spots, but you might find out who the contractor yeah, was. Yes, Steve. Okay, so this has been jumping around. I don't know exactly where we are. I had some comments. Um, and I can start from where I wanted to start from, which is the walk streets. I also know that we're, you know, they're coming through, they're weed whacking, they're leaving a lot of debris down there, which is, it looks terrible, and it is a fire hazard. And I wish the heck, if we're paying for these guys, either they do it right or we don't we, we don't do the work at all um, uh, because it's it's it looks like hell and uh, the other thing is um, I noticed the maintenance guys uh, have continued the practice of, of pushing debris in the um, drainage canal the, next to the uh, next to the creek and that shouldn't happen that's going to impact uh, a water flow and... There's debris in the, in the actual... They're pushing it, they're bulldo they're using it, the, they're using bulldozing as a method of landscaping all throughout there. It looks terrible. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I think if you need to, if you need to clear stuff, do it the right way or don't do it at all. Um, I, I think that area looks very rough. Um, I would like to see uh, we have a number of seniors. We have a number of seniors uh, who have health issues and mobility issues. I would like to see the uh, uh, dog leg, I guess you call it. Um, I'd like to see that maintained in a better manner. I'd also like to see uh, park benches there, but not the kind that Eric was talking about, uh, rustic uh, park benches for them to, to sit down. I mean... <laughs> Well, That'd be really good. It'd be great because, you know, we ha I know a number of people who yeah. have cancer. They can't, they need to rest. Yeah. And, and if we put like four or five benches along the way, that would really open up that access to them. It's a beautiful little walk. Uh, and I just think it would just really enhance the park a great deal. Um, and concerning rack issues, um, I'm a swimmer. Uh, I swim as much as I can. And for the last two weeks, I haven't really been able to swim much because of uh, scheduling issues. Um, uh, the, as we have every year, the pool parties came. But it seems to me that what's going on is that the lap swim is being reduced, 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 crunched. This weekend, there was no lap swimming. Um, I'm in the neighborhood, so it doesn't affect me as much as it affects someone like my wife who gets back from the city around 6 o'clock. She can't really use the pool. We're paying for membership. We can't use the pool. I'd like to suggest a couple of solutions. First of all, with uh, uh, add an hour in the evening after 6, after the water devils, tack on an hour. Uh, and make that available for adult swim for the community. Also, uh, with these Groupons, I just got a Groupon this afternoon offering me $3 uh, admission for each time uh, to, for a punch pass. And, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking, I get over here at noon and there's all these office workers, there's a whole bunch of them now that have decided that they have a lunchtime swim club and they pack the pool, and th those of us who are members, taxpayers, we're, it's our pool. The, the purpose of this park is really to serve the residents, 
Everyone else outside this area is a customer and needed, needs, you need to, to treat it as such. When we, are, we, who are paying much more than everybody else, can't use our own facilities, that's wrong, okay? So it's a scheduling issue. You can look at it, you can address it with pricing, you can address it with, um, you know, having members only hours or something like that. I understand you like Groupon because you feel that it gives you extra money, but when it detracts from uh, the experience of the residents, that's wrong, okay? So um, my suggestion is uh, members only, uh, lap swimmers, that, that anyone who has a, a membership would, would be able to do that. And, um, and that way we can just kind of manage the, the demand uh, over there at the pool. Um, in general, things are going great, and keep up the good work. Yeah. Can I make a comment about the, or just a response to the, the last one? Um, so I, I've been swimming at the pool every morning since April, mm -hmm. um, except for the days when I do something else in the morning. And actually, there's only been one or two times that I've had to share a lane when I go at 8.30 in the morning. So I think it's about finding the time for you that feels comfortable because in comparison to swimming at the Y where I've been swimming every day before then, often there's four or five people in the lane and at the Burnham pool, like I said, like once or twice. I mean, I Yeah, the morning is there. definitely left. It's really the noon time of swimmers. And so I, I guess, I, you know, I, there are... If I, I pay a fair amount, then it, it's just, you, the pool's full, it, full right, and you, pay, you, they, they're paying $15, you know. Good for them, right? If they got a deal and they found a time that works for them, but if, but I guess I, I'm saying I, we all have, you, you know, represent us and, though. That's the point. The whole point of this district is for the residents. So right, but just as Shane was talking about, you know, one person outside of the district comes and buys a pool membership that pays for the group on the same with the camp. You know, sending out those things. That's the entire point of group It's, on, it's managing demand is what I'm talking about. I'm not saying, and in and, and point of fact, I think it would encourage additional memberships if there was some kind of uh, benefit to being a member. But now it's, it's kind of like, well, I don't know if I'm going to go much this month. I'll just buy one punch pass, uh, one set of punch passes, and we get less money as a result. I just think that the demand is not being uh, uh, properly managed. Date of the next Park and Rec Commission meeting is June 27th. New and other business. Request for future meeting agenda items. Anybody? Okay, Anybody? Just Eric? I, I have the items you guys want. <laughs> okay. All right. Can I add something? Go for it. Um, I know Eric was talking about it might take a couple more months before he can get all the information about PG&E and the solar and that kind of thing. I would like to see that included in a future manager's report, maybe not as an agenda item. But the one thing I would like to see in a, an agenda item is something about LAFCO. It seems to me that over a year ago we were supposed to have a report from the guy or the woman and then it was delayed six months, and then I never heard. Now, maybe I missed that meeting, but what's going on with LabCo? So I was just thinking that it would be nice if somebody who knows about LabCo just might give us a little clue as to what they're talking about. I, well, I can answer that. Well, okay. you don't have to tell me now. Well, this, there really hasn't been much on their end, and they've changed up their work plan quite a bit. And I think one of their most recent meetings, if you go onto their website, they have all of their agendas and everything on there, and it'll show you what their board approved as their work plan for the coming year. I know they talk about doing an MSR for this region. Right. Uh, I really don't think it's taken off the ground much at all, if any. Oh, okay. Um, and again, if you just go look at their website, um, they lay out their work plan for the entire year. Okay. Um, and it's but right there's there. nothing from Marinwood. I have. We have had no, no conversations or discussions okay. with them whatsoever. That's uh, great. On thank as far you. as their municipal service review goes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, 
I would hope that this would be a concern that we all have, and that is the future of this district. Uh, I don't know if you've been following the news. Uh, Sacramento. Is, can I interrupt for just, is this for an agenda item to go on? Yes. Okay. Isn't that what you requested? That's, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so, um, uh, so up at the state, uh, they have passed some housing laws. Uh, there's one SB 35, which just passed the Senate, uh, Senate. And basically what that, it's uh, sponsored by Senator Weiner from San Francisco, who really wants to put a lot of housing uh, in outlying counties, including Marin. Um, and what it basically will do, it will have ministerial approval of large-scale projects. So, um, if we are allocated 1,100 units, that's what we, the county put down for us uh, in the last two RENA cycles. Uh, basically, if, he, his, if his bill becomes law, that means that developers will be able to say, here's my plan, I have to put it in, it's going in. So this is an issue that is real, and it may, it will obviously affect this district. And I think um, as we're talking about the future, this is something that I think should be discussed openly in the community. And we all have an interest in it, and the district has an interest in it. I know you want to say that you're not land use people, but it will affect our services that we deliver and also our tax base. So that's my request. Uh, I'm discuss trying to find out what you want to put on the agenda. The agenda item would be discussing uh, would be discussing growth scenarios for Marinwood CSD and uh, I think we can address that with H and I last H and I. Yeah, well, I mean, at the end of the day. Did you say SB 37? SB 35. Five, thank you. It, it's, we, it, we changed it up, taxing, well, with H and I. Well, I, this I mean, that's happen. about all we can do. You're, this is the only body that there is. This but is the only collection of neighbors that there are. are. So if, if you... The county is what, responsible for all of that. Okay, so you're not responsible for it. Okay. I recognize I like the board members members members. items of interest. I'd like to recognize Linda for her flooring. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Excellent. It does have some flaws in it, but there, as as the firefighters have said, it makes it look interesting, unique, whatever. But it is pretty. I like their kitchen. It's pretty. Uh, anything else? Then I entertain a motion. Mm -hmm. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 To adjourn. <laughs> so Eric, can I can I have your commitment uh, to meet with the Shell Creek Watershed Council? Well, you, concerning the maintenance uh, project, uh, you said you were meeting with the environmental group. Yeah, I said it was regulatory. Yeah, you said, yeah. You said, yeah. But you said environmental. Uh,
you know, finally found where it is, and I'll say yes. By the county.